Our scripture passage this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 17 through 26. Listen, hear, and receive God's word for us. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch Jesus, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I will share with you that there are some passages in the Bible that if I had my way, I would not use this preaching text. The passage that I just read is one of them. And although Luke 6 is not today's lectionary reading, there, and there are certainly others that I could have preached this morning, this passage just would not leave me alone. I do not consider a sermon on blessings and woes to be one that God's people are really interested in hearing or receiving. But nevertheless, here we go. Jesus knew how to make an entrance. Descending from his mountaintop prayer room after calling his 12, dis 12 disciples and apostles, Be Jesus moves to level ground. He comes down to where the people are, believers and skeptics, Jews and Gentiles, disciples and the righteous religious right, the rich and the poor, the healthy and the afflicted, people who had come from places near and far to hear what he had to say and to be healed from their spiritual and physical sicknesses. Jesus' power just exuded from him. And just like the woman with the issue of blood, people knew that if they could just touch Jesus, they would be made whole. Standing on level ground with people from people whom some characterized as unclean and unworthy, Jesus gets straight to it. He is real, raw, and unambiguous in Luke's version of the Beatitudes. They are not the sanitized version of Matthew's Beatitudes that speaks to the poor in spirit and hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Jesus declares, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, Jesus says, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Now, if any of us were to go out into this neighborhood and share Jesus' blessing with people living with income insufficiency, sickness, or despair, or share this good news with people who are living without food, shelter, and clothing, or any of the other necessities of life, our pronouncement would not be well received and most likely would fall on deaf ears. It would be considered another empty promise or a promise that would be fulfilled only on the other side of life. I dare say that for decades, centuries indeed, people of African descent, indigenous and people of other, and other people of color worshiped and praised God often in secret and rejoiced that one day 
they would make it to heaven where they would receive their reward. People who are in need want their needs to be fulfilled right now, not on the other side of earthly life. Jesus' pronouncement was not just a promise to set, be set free from worldly plight of need and degradation in this world. Jesus' promise was one of already, your, already and yours in the kingdom of heaven. And yet to come, you shall be filled and you will laugh. Blessed does not describe a state of happiness or bliss. Theologically, happy blessedness is a sense of standing humbly before God. The people Jesus blessed that day on level ground were those who put their faith and trust in the God of their salvation, who despite everything, whatever their station in life, regardless of their want or wealth, and yes, I suspect that there were some, and I know there are some, who, wealthy folks who put their faith and trust in God and stand humbly before God too. All of these people know and they knew that God was and is with them, keeping, providing, and comforting them. This is a very heavy season for many people. Many of us have experienced the death of loved ones, sickness and disease, the continued war and destruction in Ukraine rages on and on and on. People enter this country seeking a better life and are being transported against their will to northern cities. Devastating hurricanes and other natural disasters are destroying people's homes, their lives, and their livelihoods. And record inflation and increased cost of living are making it difficult for so many. We might be wondering, where is God in the midst of all of this? And I declare to you as one of many who has recently experienced the death of a loved one, if God was not by my side, if Holy Spirit was not accompanying me, if I could not stand on the promises of God, I don't know where I would be in this moment. Without faith and trust in the resurrection, without the recognition that God is making all things new, and without remembering that God has lifted us from darkness and lonely places before, we would be miserable and without hope. But I stand here to tell you that our hope, hallelujah, is in Christ Jesus, and that our hope is made real in the love, care, and compassion of our God and that we continually extend to one another. Now, I'm going to pivot for just a moment, but stay with me, and I'll get back to the text. This is Mission Month at ELPC, a time when we int intentionally set aside for the, for the mission committees and other ministries to offer opportunities for our congregants to learn more about how to live into being a Matthew 25 congregation recommitting ourselves to dismantling structural racism, eradicating systemic poverty, and building congregational vitality. This time is ordained to remind us that we are working, we are working to bring about the kingdom of God by being Christ-like in real time. To remind us, and most especially those of us with financial means, that we are to walk with, provide for and care for the least, the lost, and the left behind. In reality, every month in the life of a Christian and worshiping community should be one in which we aspire to be like Jesus. You see, Jesus welcomed and accompanied the outcast and the marginalized. Jesus healed the sick, ate with tax collectors, challenged religious dogma, and Jesus included women in his inner circle. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus was countercultural. He went against the religious, governmental, and social conventions of his day, and he did so unapologetically. It was this same Jesus who declared with holy boldness that he was sent by God to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, and sight to the blind. So while on level ground with the people, Jesus also blatantly declared, Woe to you who are rich! for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what 
they did to their ancestors and the false prophets. One commentator says that Jesus' tone was direct and terse, pointing and searing. The God of the prophets is speaking and creating a new, unsettling, upsetting order. Jesus warns those who do not follow in this way that their lives will be woeful. God is turning the world upside down and taking discipleship far beyond a simple follow me to a level of sacrifice that is nothing less than daunting. End of quote. In the kingdom or kingdom of God, there is and will be a reversal of fortunes. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Those who have shall lose and those without shall win. God demands our all. God demands everything. Our material goods, our money, our creature comforts, our self-reliance, and the, it, the entirety of our lives is what God requires of us. By pronouncing woes, Jesus issues a prophetic challenge to people who are financially well off, full and self-satisfied. People for whom serving God and others is an afterthought, a mindless habit, or perfunctory. People who put their hope and trust in their bank statements, their investments, their lavish lifestyles, and their ability, skills, and mental acumen. Jesus warns, God does not and will not bless when our goal is to protect and build institutions and empires rather than build up and secure people. God does not bless when faith in our ability and knowledge transcends or eclipses our faith in God. And when they do, Jesus declared that grief and woe will be our end, for we already have our reward. It was the author of the Gospel of Matthew who wrote, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. A great number of people came out to hear and be healed by Jesus, for power just exuded from him. The power of God that breaks down barriers and redefines our definitions of what it means to be godly, a true follower and worshiper. Power that reorients and destroys the walls we construct and the boxes in which we try to restrain and contain God. What the people saw and heard that day, standing level with and next to Jesus, was not some high and lifted up falutin sort of gospel. It was real, it was raw, and it was difficult to receive, and maybe even more difficult to believe. But in the words of one commentator, what the people heard and what they saw is what is and what always will be heard and seen when God's word is truly unleashed and God's work is truly done. The upbuilding of the realm of God with and among the blessed, end of quote. So beloved people of God, as we enter into the month of October, lifting up mission ministries, continuing to live into our Matthew 25 commitments, standing for justice, peace, and equity, discerning and preparing for an interim pastor, considering how we will give and what we will sacrifice in the days before us and the years to come. And as we gather at table today with Christians near and far on this World Communion Sunday, remember Jesus' challenge to give our all to God. Remember Jesus' love and sacrifice. And remember God's grace that same grace that is poured out for us always and that chases us down each and every day. And realize that Jesus' blessings and woes, they are real and they will come to pass. They will come to fruition on earth and in heaven. Now I ask you today, what are you willing to sacrifice that we might be deemed as the blessed of God on earth and in heaven? And more importantly, to be a blessing to someone else. Amen.